Uh, when you look at the cost curves of a comp any company, generally, you, you, what you tend to see is that as you add uh, workers or you add variable inputs to your fixed inputs, uh, the costs come down um, on a per output basis. Uh, but there comes a point where they start to go up again. And, and this comes from the uh, law of diminishing returns, which says as you in add a, a variable input to a fixed input, sooner or later, uh, the extra output gained from the additional variable input starts to decrease. And we're, we're going to show this here. Let's just pretend I'm, I've got a billboard company that I want to um, manufacture billboards uh, for to advertise my subject or my school. Uh, and of course the first worker is going to add zero extra product or extra units uh, or the, the zeroth worker should I say and then if we add another worker um, I'm going to hope that they're going to actually produce something and in this case let's say one because they're doing everything there's no specialization and what, what you see is um, you know, they might be hammering up the boards, they might be painting the boards, doing photographing and so on. But if I get another worker in, they can split the task and, and that second worker in this case is going to add two units, third worker three extra units, fourth worker four extra units, five. But when I get to my sixth worker, they start to get in each other's way and um, the seventh worker get in each other's way and you can see that the extra output they add is starting to decline. We still get extra output but not at the same increasing rate and it eventually goes to zero and if we've got a, an, an 11th worker it would probably go negative that that worker would get in the way so much that in fact uh, they'd reduce their out, output even though we're having to pay this worker. So um, what you see here is your total product. Now that's the total number of billboards that are being produced. So. Uh, and if you haven't got any workers, obviously not producing any workers. So I'm going to stick that in there and put a little formula in. So that equals B4. And uh, your next your next unit is going to be uh, B4. Uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be your C4, should I say? Which is uh, the zero unit there, which is is your um, which is actually that cell there, plus plus your B5 cell. So it's your B5 cell, which is that that one there. So that kicks in there, and I should have put a little equal sign just at the front of it, because it's always helpful to have the equal sign in the formulas. And then that calculates one. So your formula is. C4 plus B5, which is that cell and that cell, and then I just keep on adding it up. And what you should see is the actual total product increasing. Uh, and you can see it increases to this final one where it gets to 25. So those those are the numbers. Now, I'm going to hire workers, and I'm, I, I'm not going to pay them too much, $500 per week to do their work. And, and there are all sorts of problems. Some workers aren't necessarily as efficient as others but if each worker costs five hundred dollars per week then um, it's pretty simple to work out the cost of the workers and, and I'm also pretending that all the costs associated with those workers is included in that 500 so if they drink coffee at the, um, at the cafe uh, that I provide and uh, that's all included in that cost so obviously if I don't hire any workers it's uh, there's not going to be any cost and I'm, I'm going to leave that blank so your first worker is, is going to cost you uh, $500 and uh, that's there and then your second worker is going to be uh, this cell here and then plus 500 Okay, so it's going to cost you $1,000 in total for, for your, if you hire two workers and then each worker the cost goes up so all up it, by the time we get to my tenth worker ten workers at five hundred dollars is five thousand dollars so what I'm going to calculate now next column this is the, the one that you see in most economics diagrams with monopoly and perfect competition uh, not that we've got that far in the course yet is your average variable cost and in this case there's no point 
actually putting in a number there because there'll be a division error. Uh, so what we're going to do here is um, we're not going to divide by the number of workers, but we're going to divide by the amount of output. So in this case, you can see here it's 500. And uh, I'm going to press the little equals in here and say it's equals 500. And then, of course, I'm going to divide by the, the total amount of output or the total product, uh, which I put the divide symbol and then the, the, the one in. Okay, so as your output goes up, what do you think will happen to costs? And what we see here is that it's $500 to produce your first billboard, but uh, in terms of your average costs anyway, average variable costs, and if we just fill that right down to the very last one, what you see here is that your costs, have, they sort of they go down, and then they, they sort of bottom out at uh, 157, which is there, and then they start to go up again. And by the time we get to the 10th worker, your average variable cost is $200 per worker. So your average cost of a worker is actually quite different to your, um, in terms of the amount of output that they produce, is quite different. Uh, our fixed costs are, are much simpler, and all I'm going to say here is that the fixed costs are $1,000. And that's, say, the cost of, if they work from home, uh, all the cost of any buildings or rent and electricity, all of that sort of stuff that we have to pay. And these are the costs that, of course, don't change every week. And I just want to fill that whole column there like that. So it's a nice, pretty sort of diagram like that. So your next one is your average fixed costs. And um, we're not going to graph these, but your average fixed cost, and we need to start here in the second line because dividing by zero is meaningless. Uh, your average fixed cost will, however, be a, um, won't be a thousand dollars. It will be almost infinite because uh, if you've got no output, then that that cost is spread over no output. So a very very high cost. So uh, we'll start at one. And we put the equals formula in again. We click on your fixed costs. And then what we want to do is divide by the the output. And that's given again by the total product, which is there. So, uh, and we seem to have just a tiny little problem in there. And we'll just make that spreadsheet just a bit wider. And then it will be nice like that. So uh, what you've actually got here now is... Um, your average fixed cost for your first unit. And what you'd expect to see is that that to decline and fall as we uh, go across, um, as we go across and we um, increase our output. And you can see that declines and it gets lower and lower and lower. So if you, if you graph that, and we're not going to graph that today, but if you did graph that, we, we'd see that decrease. Your total cost is, uh, and we're going to have to make this a little wider, is your um, total cost per worker, which is given by this column, plus your fixed cost. So it's a nice, easy formula. So it's uh, your fixed cost plus your variable cost or your cost per worker totaled. Uh, and I'll just go back and do that again. So it's D5 plus, well, we'll start, we'll start from here. It's your fixed costs and then you put your plus in and your cost per work and that will come to $1,500. And then we just average that down and it goes down like that. Okay, and it goes up to $6,000. Now, your average cost, one of the things that's a bit confusing about this is we're actually not looking at the cost per worker later on here, we're looking at your output. And we want to work out what's the average cost of producing um, all the billboards that we produce. So we, what we do is we take the total cost and we divide that by the output, which is over here. Total cost divided by the output, and the output, the total output, and that's there is one. So, and we'll just make that uh, just a little bit wider, and so that you can see it. The column's not quite wide enough. And we'll move down here and we'll fill that column in. And what you see again is this sort of pattern. Costs come down quite rapidly and then eventually diminishing returns kick in and it starts to go up again. 
Right. So your final and your very, very final calculation that we want to do is your marginal cost. Now this is a little bit more difficult in this case because I've got the, uh, when you have a look over here at, at the output, you'll see that the output goes up, you know, in, in unusual units. So I'm sort of almost doing a marginal, uh, sort of average marginal cost in this calculation. Uh, because I, I don't have a nice set of numbers which you'll often see, you'll see the numbers creeping up uh, a lot more nicely um, in your normal tables. So this formula is uh, given by your um, change in total cost and um, for, for this one we actually do need a, a formula in here uh, to, to you give you the first calculation and your total cost when you don't produce any output is a thousand dollars so but we can't calculate uh, that in there so now what we want to do is calculate the change in total costs for each unit of output now that's a little bit more difficult to do when you've got a range of several outputs but we're going to try here and in this case what we're going to do is um, put a new formula here which uh, is given um, by, by your change in total cost and I should have actually put that thousand dollars on there so I'm just going to stick a thousand dollars thousand dollars in there because I made a little mistake So you see these get tricky, these formulas, even when you've actually got them all written down in front of you. So this column here is $1,000. And that's your uh, total cost. And it's your change in total cost per unit of output. So uh, I put equals, and I, I'll just use brackets here for simplicity, B, H5 minus H4 so that's five hundred dollars and then divide by the output which is one but in this case we actually need to average it over the two units so in this case I'm going to say it's either divided by uh, one so I or two depending or three and I put there to get it down to one unit so it's going to be one C5 minus C four and we close the bracket so that takes account of the fact that um, that's not a nice even number of units so if I if I then move that down you'll get a series of numbers here as well that's like 250 so 250 dollars is uh, gives you the um, marginal cost or the extra cost of an extra unit and you can see it falls off quite rapidly uh, the, and as the increased output links in and we have a little division area area up the top because it hasn't increased so we'll just get rid of that so now that we've got all of these in here uh, I've got a graph of the average cost the variable cost and the marginal cost so let's just have a look at that and you can see that what happens is that your marginal costs come quite down quite rapidly and they intersect your AVC which is the blue line there and they intersect your um, your average cost there and uh, that will pro eventually that average cost will start to increase and your average variable cost will start to increase as well it doesn't show up very well on this graph but um, one of the things you should note is that where that line intersects is always perfectly flat there and you, you can see it has actually just increased a tiny bit down there. So that's the uh, kind of graph that you would be expected to draw. Um, thanks for watching. I know it's been a long, long video here.